What's up everybody, I'm Seth Fowler and today I'm taking a look at the sneaker releases in the first half of April 2020 and I'll let you know what I think about each one of these releases and whether I think each one is going to sit on shelves or sell out. Obviously things have been a little crazy over the last couple weeks and will probably continue to be crazy for the next couple weeks to couple months and that's unfortunate and at the end of the day it will affect sneaker releases but I want to bring you guys some positivity and some normality. The good news is though there's still a lot of sneakers releasing in the first half of April and I've got to be honest honest, even for just a normal month, the beginning of this month is pretty solid. If you're new to the channel or maybe you've never seen this series before, basically what I do is I break down all the sneaker releases for the first half or second half of a month and I let you know what I think of each one of these releases and whether I think each one is going to sit on shelves or sell out. So that's why I call the video Sit or Sell makes a lot of sense. And if this is the first time you're checking out the channel, maybe consider subscribing. It would mean the world to me and you guys would get a lot of updated sneaker content. And if you guys want even more sneaker content, you should check out my Instagram and my Twitter at RealSethFowler. At SethFowler was taken. I know at RealSethFowler is kind of douchey, but it's the only option I had. But without any further ado, let's jump right into the month of April. Starting things off on April 1st, we've got a brand new Adidas Ultra Boost silhouette called the Adidas Ultra Boost DNA that's releasing in both a white and a black colorway. So this shoe is interesting because it's a standard Ultra Boost, except the entire upper is covered in leather. And apparently the reason for doing this is to pay homage to 50 years of running sneakers, which I guess I get. Aesthetically, the Ultra Boost DNA looks fine. It's a little bit bulkier than standard Ultra Boost, and for me personally, I'm not a huge fan of it, but I think there will be people who will like it. Not only that, but the Ultra Boost DNA also features an interesting sort of ribbed toe, which I'm not sure exactly what the inspiration behind that part of the shoe is, but again, it's unique and it's different, so I don't really mind it. Like I mentioned before, the DNA is releasing in both a white and a black colorway, and if I had to pick one up personally, I probably would go for the white colorway. It's an interesting take on the Ultra Boost silhouette, and I think if this shoe had released in 2017, it would have sold out. But I've said that for a lot of different Ultra Boosts, and at this point, I feel like the Ultra Boost silhouette has kind of lost its hype. So unfortunately, like most other Ultra Boosts that will release this year, I think this shoe will probably sit in both colorways. Then finishing off April 1st, we've got the Women's Air Jordan 1 Low Multicolor Snakeskin. This shoe comes in a primarily black leather makeup with multicolor snakeskin accenting different panels of the shoe. Not only that, it features a black Nike swoosh outlined by metallic gold which adds a little bit more pop to the sneaker. It's honestly not a bad looking silhouette and I think a lot of people are excited about it. I bet you if this shoe dropped in both men's and women's and in a high top version, this shoe would go crazy. Regardless, I think it's a really unique looking sneaker. I love the multicolor hits, but because this shoe is an Air Jordan 1 low and because of the fact that it's only releasing in women's sizes, I do think that there is a pretty good chance that this shoe might sit. Moving on to April 2nd, we've got the Adidas 4D Run 1.0 in both a white colorway and a black colorway. We've finally gotten to a point where 4D is not really hyped up anymore. We've got a lot of 4D silhouettes that pretty much just sit on shelves, and that's kind of surprising because 3D printed midsoles are still really cool. Adidas has also started to ramp up production of 4D sneakers because they have more capability to do so, and because of that, they're releasing two different colorways of a pretty simple 4D silhouette. The 4D Run 1.0 is a pretty simple look and comes in both a white and a black colorway. Now I've got to say personally, the only one that I'm actually interested in is the black colorway, and that's because it comes with black 4D. We haven't seen that in a really long time, and I think that's sick. The white colorway is fine, it's nothing really crazy, but because these shoes are more expensive than standard Adidas models, and because 4D is kind of played out for some people, I think both of these colorways will probably sit. Then on April 3rd, we've got the Grade School Air Jordan 5 Splatter. This shoe is pretty cool. It's got a very Easter vibe to it, especially with the orange and purple splatter print on the upper. It kind of looks like an Easter egg a little bit, and uh, it's fine. I think it's a great grade school colorway. With all the Air Jordan 5s dropping, it seems like this is the year of the Air Jordan 5 for Jordan brand, and because of that, we are going to get a lot of different colorways of the sneaker. In my opinion, this is one of the more forgettable colorways, but that doesn't mean that I think it's a bad colorway. It's just kind of there. If you like it, maybe grab it for your kids, but I don't think you should have too hard of a time finding it because I think this shoe will probably sit. And then rounding off April 3rd, we've got two colorways of a brand new collaboration, the Nike Stussy Air Spiridon Cage 2. I've been very surprised by how highly anticipated this collaboration has been. When I look at this shoe, I say, 
Ah, it's nice, it's fine, it's whatever. But when other people seem to look at the shoe, they're like, damn, Stussy and Nike back at it again. I love it. It's just two different opinions, I guess. I've never been a huge Stussy fan, and so these don't really do anything for me. But if you do want to grab these shoes, they do come in two different colorways. The fossil colorway, which is kind of a light tan, and the pure platinum colorway, which is sort of a black and silver colorway. Both of these colorways look fine, and again, if you're a Nike Stussy fan, you might just eat this stuff up, but for me personally, it's a pass. That said, this is a somewhat limited collaboration, and again, more more people are really excited about this shoe than I ever would have expected. So because of that, I wouldn't be surprised if this shoe sold out in both colorways. Then moving on to April 4th, we've got the Adidas Yeezy Boost 350 V2 Cinder Reflective. As I'm sure a lot of you know, the Cinder colorway of the 350 V2s released about a week ago, but it looks like the reflective version of that shoe was actually pushed back. And it finally seems like April 4th is the day that we're getting this much more limited version of the Cinders. Aesthetically, the only real difference on this shoe is the fact that the sneaker features a 3M stripe along the lateral side. From what I can tell, that's the only reflective detail on the shoe. Like I said in my review of the Cinders, which by the way, if you you haven't seen that video yet, there'll be a link at the top of the screen, but I think the Cinders are one of the cleanest 350 V2s to release in a while, and it also gives you an alternative to the all black colorway if you missed out on that colorway. I'm not mad at the reflective version of the Cinders, in fact, I think it's a pretty nice colorway, and you know what, I might go for a pair if I can get one. The Yeezy Boost 350 V2 is already a pretty coveted silhouette, but when you add on the fact that this is the reflective version, a more limited version of that same shoe, this shoe will definitely sell out. And then after that, we've got the Air Jordan 1 Court Purple. Obviously, I already have this shoe in hand, and because of that, I've already dropped a review, so if you guys would like to check that out, make sure to click the link at the top of the screen. But like I said, this is genuinely one of my most anticipated sneakers of the month, and that's because I love Jordan 1s, and this is a really clean Jordan 1 colorway. Obviously, this is sort of a 2.0 version of the 2018 Court Purples. And it's interesting because Jordan brand is seeming to employ the same color scheme techniques that they used on the shattered backboards with the Court Purples. The 1.0 version of of the shoe had sort of a black toe makeup with the color hit in the center of the toe, and the 2.0 version of the shoe has more of a Chicago makeup, like the Shattered Backboard 2.0s, or in this case, the Court Purple 2.0s. Other than the color blocking, the shoe is pretty similar to standard Jordan 1s. There are a few small changes which I talk about in the review, so if you guys want to learn more, again, check out that video. But honestly, it's a great sneaker, and it's one that's definitely worth picking up. And as we all know, because the shoe is an Air Jordan 1 high, and also because it's a really clean colorway, I definitely expect this shoe to sell out. Then on April 8th, we've got the Air Jordan 7 Neutral Gray. This Air Jordan 7 is set up as sort of a predecessor to the Air Jordan 7 hair, and in fact even has the SKU number of the Air Jordan 7 hair printed on its heel. The sneaker comes in sort of a Bugs Bunny gray and is also covered in a faux fur upper. The shoe also features light pink and light green accents, and I've gotta say, for a sneaker completely covered in fur, which is usually not my thing, it's actually a pretty clean looking shoe. With Space Jam 2 on the horizon, it's no surprise that this shoe is dropping now, and it is a pretty clean look. I also wouldn't be surprised if it was a pretty limited release, and because of that, I do think that this shoe will sell out. Moving forward to April 9th, we've got the Nike Air Max 2090 in the triple white colorway. Just like some of the other sneakers on the list, I've done a review of this sneaker already, just the silhouette, not the colorway, so if you guys would like to check that video out, there'll be a link at the top of the screen. The Air Max 2090 is a sneaker heavily inspired by the Air Max 90, and overall, I was pretty impressed with the shoe. If you didn't want to pick up either of the two colorways that dropped already, but you did want to pick up a pair of 2090s, this triple white colorway is a decent way to go. That said, I do think this shoe will be a GR, which means it will be readily available Available, and for that reason, I think this shoe is probably going to sit on shelves. Next up, we've got a women's Air Jordan 1 mid in a multicolor colorway. This shoe seems heavily inspired by the Melody Ashani Air Jordan 1 mids that dropped earlier this year, or the end of last year, I don't really remember. It features a pink, yellow, green, blue, orange, white, black, and probably more color upper, and to be honest, it's a pretty clean looking sneaker. From what I can tell, this sneaker isn't a collaboration, and it kind of seems like Jordan Brand is trying to cash in on this sort of multicolor Air Jordan 1 mid hype that's going on right now, and to be honest, more power to them there. Gonna make money off of it, that's for sure. And because of the fact that this shoe is more wild looking and does resemble some more popular silhouettes, I wouldn't be surprised if it does get pretty hyped up. It is still an Air Jordan 1 mid, which isn't as popular as the Air Jordan 1 highs, and it's also a women's only release, which means that sizes won't be as readily available. But at the end of the day, because of the way that this shoe looks, I think it might actually sell out. 
Then continuing on to April 10th, we've got the Reebok Question Mid Blacktail. I'm pretty sure I already covered this release in a previous Sitter Cell video, and I think that this release actually just got pushed back. If you're not too familiar with this shoe, it's Allen Iverson Silhouette, and to be honest, it's one of the cleanest Reebok sneakers ever made, at least in my opinion. As the name would suggest, the shoe features a black toe with some black accents around the primarily white sneaker. In addition to that, the shoe also has some pretty nice hits of metallic gold, and I think overall, it's a really clean Reebok Question Mid. However, even though the shoe looks great, I don't think it's that hyped up, and for that reason, I think the shoe is gonna sit. Next up, we've got the Jonah Hill Adidas Superstar. This was a collaboration I just didn't see coming, and I guess I should have expected it because he's part of the Adidas family, but still, it was definitely a surprise. Jonah Hill's take on the Adidas Superstar seems to be a much more premium, primarily leather version of the sneaker with a lot of leather details that aren't usually featured on the shoe. The shoe also features a black stitched on heel tab with the JH initials embroidered into it in green. Honestly, it's a pretty clean Adidas Superstar, and if I have the chance to pick it up, I definitely will. And because of the fact that this shoe is a collaboration, and also because it's probably going to be pretty limited, I wouldn't be surprised if this shoe sold out. Also releasing on the same day, we've got another Celebrity Adidas collaboration with the Ninja Adidas Night Jogger Time In. This shoe is pretty similar to the initial Ninja Night Jogger, except this time around it comes in sort of a pinkish orange instead of blue. The first Ninja Night Jogger sold out instantly, which I honestly wasn't expecting. I just didn't know that he had that much pull in the sneaker community, but apparently he does. And even though, to be honest, I don't like this shoe, at least not the colorway of this shoe, people still seem to be hyped on it because it's Ninja. So if you're trying to grab a pair of the new Ninja Night Joggers, make sure to be on Adidas Adidas's website right when they drop because they are definitely going to sell out. And then rounding off April 10th, we've got the highly anticipated Travis Scott Nike Air Max 270 React. I think at this point we all know that anything Travis Scott collaboration related sells out pretty much immediately. Sneakers, Reese's Puffs, bowls, spoons, it's crazy. And so it's no surprise that the hype for this sneaker is off the charts. This Air Max 270 React ENG comes in an interesting multicolor colorway. It's not really anything that we've seen before. And it also features this really weird sort of roughly hand-painted midsole, which comes off in the rain apparently, according to some tag that's on the shoe. I don't know what to think of this sneaker. I think the Air Max React 270 in the ENG variant is an interesting looking shoe. I actually reviewed the ENG Air Max React 270 also, it's a really long name. I shouldn't keep saying that over and over again. I don't know what to think. I mean, the materials used on the shoe are interesting. The colorway is interesting. It's a Travis Scott collab, but that, that whole thing with the paint rubbing off in the midsole is just kind of weird. And it's not like it rubs off to reveal something else. It just rubs off and it's just normal react underneath. I don't, I don't get it. Regardless of what I think of this sneaker, this is a Travis Scott collaboration. It will be very limited and it will definitely sell out. Then moving on to April 11th, we've got the Air Jordan 6 DMP. I actually talked about this shoe in a previous Sitter Cell video because it was originally supposed to release, I think, back in February or maybe even the beginning of March, but now it seems like it's been pushed back to April 11th due to everything that's going on in the world right now. It's a dope shoe, and if you missed out on the Defining Moments pack a couple years ago, then you probably want to grab this sneaker. The DMP Air Jordan 6 comes in all black with gold accents, and the more I think about it, this shouldn't be called the DMP Air Jordan 6 because it's not part of a pack. It should just be called the Defining Moment 6, I would think, but everyone knows it is the DMP 6, so it's going to be called that regardless. <laughs> it's a dope pair of sneakers, and if you love Jordans for their history, this is definitely a shoe that you want to pick up. And at the end of the day, the shoe will most likely be somewhat limited, and because it's so hyped up, I do think it will be difficult to get. So for that reason, I'm giving this shoe a sell. And then finally rounding off the first half of the month on April 15th, we've got the Reebok Question Low in the oatmeal colorway. I believe this is another sneaker that I talked about in the past that actually got pushed back, but regardless, it's a clean looking Reebok Question Low. The shoe comes in a primarily white leather upper with this really nice translucent blue outsole, and of course it's accented by an oatmeal or light tan colored toe. If you're a fan of Iverson or you just love this colorway, this is definitely a sneaker worth picking up. But at the end of the day, I don't think it will be that limited or that hyped, so because of that, I think it's probably going to sit. But that pretty much wraps up the list for today. Now, I would love to know your thoughts on this list and which one of these releases you're looking forward to most. So let me know in the comment section down below. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't yet, and I'll see you all in the next one.